I'm gonna make a nearly invincible Regice, and here's how. So Regice has absolutely insane natural special bulk at base 200. And its physical defense also gets a massive buff this gen with a 50% increase while it's in snow. And at the same time, it gets built-in healing every single turn with its ice body ability that we can also pair with leftovers. Usually being a special attacker, we can set up curse to surprise some people while also boosting up defense further along with physical attack. Hit him with a special attack, nothing. A physical attack in snow after some curses, even worse. And since we take hits all day, Avalanche doubles in power on a turn where you take damage to 120 before a stab, along with coverage and options like Earthquake and even Hammer Arm for some shenanigans. Red Dice is a truly infuriating ice cube, and it can become a pretty wild tank. Today, I literally just woke up and chose violence. This Regice is impossible to kill, and nobody expects it to be a physical attacker with setup curse. And that's what I'm all about here. If you're into that kind of thing as well, you should probably hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k. I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is gonna go ahead and lead off with the Hisuian Decidui. Now that's bad news for a guy who is in fact allergic to grass. As I've got the Gastrodon, this thing is basically the salt to my slug, and I should probably get on out of here. Now, I decided to switch into the Obama Snow, expecting some type of grass coverage, thinking after, you know, the nice little buff you know, from the defensive boost from the snow, I should be able to maybe take an attack and potentially get up in an Aurora Veil. But for the most part, I'm here to make it snow and then boost up our boy Red Jice in the back. So it turns out they're actually going to go for the triple arrows, which for whatever reason is a fighting move, and that, it hurts. So I cannot, in fact, take two of those. And so down goes Obama Snow. I basically come in, I'm like, hey, here's some snow. And I'm, I'm, I head out, and I do in fact die. So with that at least, I do now have a revenge switch in. I decide I'm gonna go into the Red Ice. First of all, under snow with a defensive boost, I know that I take actually less than half from a triple arrows, which is great, because it should allow me to set up a curse and maybe get something going. But also, I put the pressure on with a super effective, you know, ice attack. I also, they run the risk of me going for a terror there. So they're actually gonna end up switching out here. They're gonna bring in uh, the Jolteon, as I actually am not going to commit the terror this early, I want to just go right for the curse. Because even if I did take 45% from a triple arrows, I then have the ice body, which heals me after some leftovers. And then I'm sitting at plus one defense and attack. But as they bring in the pointy boy, I'm actually in a pretty good position here. I know that this thing can't really touch me on the special side. They actually are going to go for the fake tears, which now it just cuts my special defense in half. As I'm just like, this is fine. I'm just going to be over here cursing like a sailor. Don't mind me, I'm just ready to sink some ships and just ruin the Titanic out here. So look, even after a fake tears, I'm such a beast on the special side that I really, I, I don't even care that much. I can still tank hits. They're actually going to end up going for another one. So now I'm at minus four spadef, which is actually pretty painful. But luckily for me, I've got the coverage with a nice little earthquake and that is going to obliterate the little Jolteon. So now we're actually, I'm in an interesting position with the Red Eyes. I have, I'm, I've got my double defense, but I also have minus four special defense. So call that... A little reverse Red Ice action, and as they decide to go into the Delphox, I'm thinking, okay, well, surely they're just going to try to get as much damage as possible with a Flamethrower and my Fake Tears dash. So, I decide to bust out the Terra Water here, which is going to help me out, uh, definitely resisting that. And then I should be able to get off an Earthquake, which then just kills the Delphox, and that is the plan. So, as they go for the Flamethrower here, even with minus force, the death, it does nothing. And it, thanks, we basically melt ourselves, turn ourselves into water for that, but... As I hit him with the Earthquake, they actually, turns out it wasn't even a Delphox all along. It was freaking Hisuian Zorark, who hilariously, it ends up having a red card. So as I touch it, it switches me out, which honestly I'm not really that mad at, because I can come back in not having to worry about my special defense drops, and I'm like, that's that's kind of fine. It, it does in fact drag in the Gastrodon, who I know can take at least a couple attacks here. They now just go for the Shadow Ball, and I can take two of those. It does get the special defense drop, so... Listen, I don't know what this guy's got against my special defense today, but we're out here struggling. Anyway, I set up some Stealth Rock because I wasn't able to earlier uh, on the lead matchup with the Decidueye. So I lay those rocks down for later. I'm like, you can hold on to these bad boys. And then also, I feel like your feet aren't going to be hurt enough. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle some Legos on that side as well as I can take one more Shadow Ball. Even after the drop, they actually get another one, which is just kind of funny. But I'm just going to play some, some spikes down here. And now that's going to make my life a whole lot easier in terms of uh, some good chip on Switch in. So... Sadly, the snow does go away, so we didn't get to abuse the, the, the ice body too much. Uh, but luckily for us, Gastrodon's going to go down here, and that's going to allow me a free switch 
end up whatever I want. So I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you know who's actually pretty, pretty nice here? Freaking Red Eyes. Terra Water does help me out against the actual Delphox they have in the back. And uh, sometimes you just got to melt your body to just become more defensive. So um, I am now just going to go for another curse here. I realize they can shadow ball me, but I mean, that's not going to do very much at all. It's kind of a free, it's free real estate to just go for a curse here. So they probably realize the plan with that. They're actually going to go for a nasty plot of their own. So they double their own special attack. Going to be able to do a whole bunch more, but still, I mean, you can set up as much special as you want in the face of this Reg Ice. He really does not care. So after some leftovers, I am healthy. I do have my plus one attack and defense, and I'm like, yeah, I should probably just, I'm going to fire off a little avalanche and just neutralize the threat that is this freaking Zorark. So they do go for that Shadow Ball. It doesn't even knock me to half after a nasty plot because this thing is the GOAT. We're just doing our best Blissey impression over here, and an avalanche is going to take care of it. So... Down goes the Zorark, and at this point, we're still positioned pretty well with the Reggie, whose body is ready, and I guess it's not that ready. We don't have the snow up anymore, so I don't get the ice body to heal me up any further, but I still got some solid health, and we're looking good. So, they do actually go into the real Delphox this time. After some Stealth Rock and some Spikes, it's definitely going to be in range to where an Earthquake should be able to take care of it, and they actually fire off a Will-O-Wisp, which turns out to be a Will-O-Miss, and <laughs> that is unfortunate, but... Reg Ice is just out here agile, we're dodging wisps out here, and an Earthquake is able to take care of it. So down goes the Fox with them getting no value out of that, and we are out here rolling with the Iceberg. This has got to be one of my favorite Reggies, and a curse set is unexpected, and honestly it just works pretty well. So, on the Revenge Switch, they decide to bring back in the Decidueye, who is full health, and I am susceptible to getting bopped by a Leaf Blade here, but I do imagine I might be able to take it, especially with that plus one defense I've got. Turns out they're actually just going to bust out the Triple Arrows, which does have a high crit chance. Not going to be enough to kill. It does get the defense drop, however, but I can then just fire off the Avalanche, especially after being hit by an attack. It is going to be pretty damn strong. And while we do have only base 50 attack, you know, the curse sets us up actually pretty well. So... We're still relatively healthy after all that. A lot of the time, Hisuian Decidueye doesn't carry grass coverage if it's like a defog kind of set with potential for like knockoff and things like that. Luckily for us, we are out here still alive. And as they decide to go into the Scizor now, uh, we do have neutral defense at this point. I still feel like I should be able to maybe take an attack. They just go for the X Scissor, and I live it with 2 HP, which is actually uh, kind of wild. Now, an Earthquake doesn't do much in return because... You know, I'm a Reg Ice, but I at least got some solid chip there, and living that was actually amazing. Now, they are going to be able to finish me off with basically whatever they want to click other than Bullet Punch, and one more X Scissor is going to do it. So, Reg Ice does eventually go down, but I tell you what, not easily. This thing is a freaking monster. So, we do lose the Reggie, but we've done, we've, we've poked some holes in the squad to this point. What they've got left is going to be this Scissor. Along with, I believe, the Gyarados in the back. So, at this point, I'm feeling pretty safe to go into the Raichu. It does limit. They can't really go for Bullet Punch here. It's also in range to where a Thunderbolt should kill. Plus, we just have the matchup against the Gyarados. So, I go for the T-Bolt. is going to be able to knock out the Scizor here. And now, it's down to one final Mon. And I'm going to try to finish it off with the old Electric Rat. Just doing what this thing does best. So, final Mon being Gyarados. This thing is going to come in without an Intimidate. Reveals it is going to be Moxie. And one bad thing is that they do still have the Terra in the back pocket, so I, regardless, I'm just going to click Thunderbolt as the safest option anyway. I, but they are going to bust out the Terra. I'm like, don't be, don't be Terra Ground. And yeah, it's, it's going to be Terra Ground. So, but he is rocking the Bolt Cut, and that is bad news for Raichu, because with this, as I go for the T-Bolt, that's going to open the door for them to set up a Dragon Dance, which is not going to be ideal, and that's exactly what they're going to do. So, at plus one attack and speed... Uh, this thing is definitely going to be much more of a threat. So, here's the situation. Unless this thing is max speed, it actually doesn't outspeed here with plus one uh, on a timid Raichu. So, I'm just going to stay in here, go for the Surf. I don't really have that much of an option to switch. But I do have a super effective Surf, and I do actually outspeed. So, we're more than likely going to be uh, some bulk investment on the Gyarados. It does live, but they actually now it can fire off the Terra Blast, which is kind of just weird. I mean, this thing gets Earthquake. So, I mean, they go for the Terra Blast, which... You know, after, especially after a Dragon Dance doesn't make that much of a difference, but that's going to take care of Raichu. And at this point, they do get the Moxie, so it's actually at plus two attack, and this thing is scary. Now, I've got two Mons left. The only thing that can potentially live an attack here is actually going to be Hariyama's Fat Ass. So I bring in the Hariyama, and all I got to do is live an attack. Now they go for the Aqua Tail, and I live it with 17, which 
is actually kind of wild. I believe that was a potential roll there. I could have actually straight up just lost this to that Gyarados, but Tubby is able to clutch it out, and a Drain Punch is going to knock out uh, the Gyarados there. So that is going to be the end of the match. And honestly got a little scarier than it, I feel like it probably should have there at, at the end. But uh, yeah, that was a fun game. But you already know we do have another match with some more crazy Regi shenanigans. And at this point, if you've stuck this far into the video, you should probably hit that like button. It really does just help out the algorithm or whatever YouTube's doing these days. And I would appreciate it. So, guys working with a scary... We've got a mono ghost situation going on here. And honestly, a pretty scary team. Let's get into it. All right, so this time, what's actually kind of crazy, my dude's going to lead off with regular Decidueye this time, and I also have the same snail or slug who just does not enjoy grass. And I'm like, how many owls do I got to get through freaking today? So I am just going to go for the Stealth Rock. Now, that's because I do actually have a Rindo Berry, and I'm thinking, you know, I could probably live a Leaf Blade, but as they actually go for the Spirit Shackle, good middle ground play in case of the Switch, but also since I stay in... And now I no longer can switch. I'm just straight up locked in, but I'm just going to be like, don't mind me. I'm just laying down some rocks and doing my little sluggy thing. So at this point, I'm basically stuck here. I know a leaf blade's coming, and I'm also like, a leaf blade equals lunchtime. I can eat my Rindo Berry, which surprisingly allows me to live with 17 HP thanks to no crit. And that's actually pretty good value, because now I can set up a layer of spikes. And once again, that's going to be able to punish some switch-ins pretty well. And I got some, some spikes, some, some rocks up, and... Basically, at this point, Gastrodon is here to die. So, one more Leaf Blade turns me into some uh, a nice little tasty you know, sliced up snack. But, now I can switch into whatever I like. And actually, Abomasnow has a much better matchup against regular old Decidueye. Because, uh, of course, with the Snow Boost, defensively, this thing is a freaking monster. Also, we really threaten it with, you know, the Blizzard. And I'm going to take this opportunity to just set up an Aurora Veil. I kind of imagine they probably are going to switch out here. However, they are instead going to go for the Endure, which... It's actually interesting. Imagined I probably went for the Blizzard there, but instead I am going to Aurora Veil. Now, this is an interesting Obama Snow because rather than going for Light Clay to increase turns of the uh, Veil, I actually am Icy Rock to increase turns of the Snow. And that's just because Red Ice just enjoys the, the boost that comes with it, but also the Ice Body to just heal up more than you think the thing should. So they go for the Spirit Shackle there through the Aurora Veil does basically no nothing to our Frosted Mini Wheat, but a Blizzard actually doesn't end up knocking this thing out. Now, no to my surprise, they actually are gonna bust out a Custat Berry and Acrobatics. So that is interesting. However, take the L because I'm so damn defensive in the snow that it doesn't even do much and then a Blizzard is gonna take care of the Decidueye. So, Bad news is, I'm wasting too many turns here with the Veil. I would love to try to get the, you know, the the, uh, the Red Eyes in here earlier, but it was just too easy to click Blizzard. And now, as they're able to bring in the Serra Ledge, old Sword for Arms is a freaking a threat here. Now, of course, I don't really want this thing to set up in my face. However, I'm actually not carrying the Earth Power. And as I try to go for the Leech Seed, they actually are just going to Bitter Blade uh, right from the go. So that is not only going to be able to take me out, but it also just heals him back to essentially full. And with the Bomb of Snow going down, I'm like, okay, well, I don't have any way to set up snow anymore. And guess what time it is, baby? It is Iceberg time. And, of course, we don't really enjoy the fire matchup here. And while we do enjoy the physical defensive boost being an ice type, I do actually have to Terra out of that to ensure that I can take a, a Bitter Blade. Uh, basically, no problem. So, I am going to go for the Terra Water here. Once again, the sun comes out. It is going to, in fact, melt the old Iceberg. But luckily, with that uh, with that Terra Water, I can get a nice little matchup here versus that Bitter Blade, and then start setting up Curses to become an absolute problem once again. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. They do just go right for that Bitter Blade. Does absolutely nothing through that Aurora Veil uh, and the Resistance, which is great. It does get it back to full, which is just annoying. But as soon as this thing has to come back in on Stealth Rock and Spikes and shit later, it's it's gonna hurt. So. I do get up my free curse, essentially, and not only are we just extreme, way slower than we even were before, I do actually also now just get that attack and defensive boost, plus with the ice body from the snow and the leftovers, that is exactly what this thing is built to do. We take attack, no problem, get right back to full from all the healing, and just immediately we now have a little bit of offensive firepower with that curse and some physical defense. So I basically, I have no reason to essentially not go for another curse here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And they're actually going to end up switching into the Oricorio. Now this is uh, going to be the, the ghost fella. And while this thing is a bit scary being able to set up on like quiver dance things, there's one thing that Red Ice is not afraid of. And that is a damn special attacker. So as I go for the curse, here's where it gets interesting. They actually are going to end up having a mirror herb. So that is going to copy my stat change, which now gives it the basically the only thing meaningful 
was going to be the the, uh, the defensive boost. So with that, it's sitting at plus one defense. I imagine still I'm like, this is fine. They can't really touch me. I'm a freaking iceberg built like freaking store-bought gravy. We thick as hell out here. So they are going to end up going for that quiver dance because that's just, that's just what this damn thing does. And I'm like, well, you know, that's fine. I do get off the avalanche here. Now, here's the thing. First of all, I didn't get hit with an attack on that turn. And also, since they stole my plus one defense boost from my curse, it actually doesn't end up killing. Now, it does allow them to get off a revelation dance, however, that doesn't even hurt. And I can just finish it off with another avalanche. And now, they find themselves with their back up against a wall, and just an evil iceberg just bullying the hell out of them. So, sadly, the snow does stop, so I don't actually get the ice body uh, to heal me up any further. But after some leftovers, we're still looking like we're in a really good position, especially at plus one attack. And defense and just the natural the special defense there's there's really nothing they can do to touch me and especially even get like a two hit KO at this point so as they now decide to bring in the Miss Maggie I'm mostly just thinking that worst case scenario they have a Thunderbolt here which don't will it really will not do much even with a super effective hit they actually are gonna pull out the Thunder Wave which is far more annoying because now I just get fully parried and I run that risk you know, every turn which is unfortunate. It's going to definitely, you know, limit what this thing can do if I get unlucky on some paras, but for the most part, it shows me this thing doesn't have much to hit me with. Now, they do actually have the Hex, which you know, increases in power with my status condition, but it doesn't even knock me to half, and since I got hit with an attack, an avalanche is going to be enough uh, to knock out the freaking hat-wearing ghost. So, we are out here running through the team with Reggie. We're still well above half health here, especially after some leftovers, and I know that I can take hits not only that, but also just hit really hard in return on basically everything they have left. So, they decide now to bring in the Dragapult. Definitely going to be their hardest hitter, but it is, you know, in danger of being hit by an Avalanche. So, as it comes in, it does take some Stealth Rock and some Spikes, which is nice, uh, because an Avalanche certainly knocks this thing out. Now, they are actually going to end up committing the Terra, which is unfortunate, because I'm like, uh-oh, they're probably going to have something to resist the ice here. It is going to be the Terra Fire, so with the Candles... That is, uh, is not going to be ideal for an avalanche, even if I even am able to get it off. So, uh, the good thing is, we also know that as it's going to be a special attacker, I can take a few hits. So, with the Shadow Ball, really, it doesn't do anything, but I also, I get freaking fully paralyzed. So, Red Jice in a wheelchair is annoying because I would have still enjoyed a little bit of damage there. Now, here's the thing. I know I can take another Shadow Ball, surely, even like two of them. But also, since they went for that Terra Fire, they got out of range from Avalanche to do stuff, but... They don't know that I have the Earthquake coverage, so as they go for another Shadow Ball here, I eat it up no problem with no special defense drop, and then I do not get fully paralyzed, and an Earthquake is going to be able to take care of the Dragapult uh, with the crit there, which I, I don't think mattered, but regardless, that takes care of one of the scariest threats, and also eliminates their option to go for a Terra, so Red Dice still in a pretty good spot here. I mean, we're slowly getting whittled down, but what this thing does best is just heal himself up with some lefties and just be a monster, so... They're now going to end up bringing in the Bayonet. So, I would love to be able to get off the uh, an Avalanche here. If they want to hit me, which they're going to need to attack, an Avalanche is still going to do a lot, especially with that help from the uh, the Entry Hazard. So, Bayonet, I, I imagine they probably just go for something like a knockoff, and that's exactly what they're going to do. I, I can take that because of my Curses. does get rid of my Leftovers, which is annoying, but I get fully paralyzed, which is also incredibly annoying because I would have loved to get off that avalanche. It would have been amazing. But sadly now they can go for a Shadow Claw, which is going to take care of the Red Ice. And slowly but surely, they've whittled this thing down to the point where it's finally gone. Now, not necessarily the end of the world because while I've done such a big amount to their squad, I feel like I should have, should have it in the bag with what I've got left. Now, keep in mind, the battle is certainly not over. As they have two Mons left, it's going to be this thing along with the Seraled. So first of all, they're going to go for the Shadow Claw, and Hariyama takes way more damage than I should have from that because of the damn critical hit, which is actually incredibly unfortunate. But now here's the thing. I do kill it with a knockoff, and knowing that their final mon is going to be the Seraled, I first I resist their ghost coverage, but also I'm thick fat, so I know that I can take a Bitter Blade. I honestly, a, a Bitter Blade does like a max of 25% to this Hariyama. I've been in these situations before, and I know that I can definitely live uh, a bitter blade here then all i gotta do is fire off an earthquake and then that's a dub so they go for that bitter blade and it gets a critical hit which is gonna take care of the hariyama and i'm like wow that actually that, that's gonna throw the game <laughs> that's gonna turn things around a bit because with that thing gone that's kind of my best check to that and i was not able to get off any damage and also it healed even further with that bitter blade so that combination of double critting the hariyama really 
really kind of puts my balls in a vice grip. So at least here's the thing. I do have Raichu who can outspeed and get off a surf, which is great, but it's just, it's not gonna do much. It, it only brings it down just below half. And the bad thing is now a bitter blade is not only gonna be able to just dust my frail ass, but also it just heals it up even more. And I'm like, oh no, this, this has gone from real good to to real bad. And now, we've gotten ourselves in a 1v1 situation in a match that I felt like I had full control in. So, at this point, all I have left is going to be Meowstic, which is bad because we're up against a damn ghost type. However, I do have the coverage with Shadow Ball, and I know that I'm faster. So, while I do get off the Shadow Ball, here's the thing. It, can, it, it doesn't do anything to the guy. It <laughs> lives it easily, but I get a Spadef drop. And as now they decide to go for the Bitter Blade, I do at least take that. And I, I know that I can take one of them. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't kill me, but it just heals it to the point where now, even a Shadow Ball with the special defense drop is not probably going to kill, but then it doesn't even matter because they actually bust out the Shadow Sneak with the priority. And down goes the Meowstic, and this is the most asshole Settle Edge of all time, is able to pull it back. So honestly... It, when you, sometimes you think it's over and it's not. A couple of crits and you're just, uh, the game has changed. But regardless, that was a really good match against a really cool team. And shout out to my dude for, for pulling that one out. Sometimes that's the way it goes and that's the game you play. So I still had a whole lot of fun with it. This, this team is interesting. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching as well. Thank you very much if you did make it all the way through the vid. I do appreciate the support. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I will catch you next time. Peace out.